Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with another Boating Tech Talk. We've got a question from a fellow boater uh, named Tom. Tom asks, Jeff, I've got a 1997 Sea Ray 40 foot power boat on the hard for the winter in Michigan, USA. It's a 12 volt, 30 amp, uh, so 12 volt battery system, 30 amp shore power. Uh, Tom goes to say he's got two start batteries, right? So uh, dedicated, obviously, dual engines on board, uh, one generator battery and two house batteries. So that to me is four battery banks. Each starter is probably a dedicated battery, a generator battery, and then the house batteries are probably together. Can I run from the storage building outlets to my shore power inlets using extension cords with suitable adapters to charge the batteries and power some lights without discharging the batteries? That's a gun. good question. Um, so yeah, it's actually, we have this sort of same problem here on the West coast, uh, where people put their boats, uh, in, uh, large warehouses, uh, generally most large warehouses where boats are stored here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, don't allow power. Uh, they do that for probably fire reasons. Um, and they just, when you lose one boat in a building, you probably lose more than one. So, uh, many of the large, uh, storage yards actually don't allow, uh, power cords. Some do, uh, or there's very few of them. Uh, and Tom asked a good question. The first thing is this question about extension cords. Extension cords is a real problem, especially if your batteries are going to be drained and your battery charger is going to have high output. One thing Tom didn't talk about here is the size of his battery charger and how many amps will that, uh, load up on his shore power cord. So it all depends on if it's an inverter charger or not. Is it a 100 amp charger or a 50 amp charger? But the reality is, is that when you actually connect to shore power, most of you are going to have what's called a watt meter. And that watt meter is really useful. Uh, or even you might have an amp meter. It doesn't matter. Water amp. And I, it's important for you as a boat, or, boat owner and a boat operator to start quantifying and knowing like, how much of my shore power am I using? If I've got a 30 amp shore power and I'm plugging into shore power and only the battery charger's on and the batteries were somewhat drained, what does my amps go to? Like, am I drawing 10, 15, 20 amps uh, to recharge the batteries? And then the question is going to be, um, can I put other type of loads on board that will never cause nuisance tripping of that 30 amp breaker? And that could be, let's say, for example, a small little heater or a de dehumidifier, something like that. Something that maybe runs a little bit of power, but not too much because 30 amps at 120 actually does go quickly. Um, and so, yeah, the question would be how to make sure that my loads, well, first of all, if you've got a boat um, and it's in the storage, what you should probably think about doing is disconnecting all loads that don't have to run. So that would be basically pretty much powering off the battery switches off. And what you'll find and what you want to confirm and what I think that's a, what Tom's maybe a little bit worried about is if I disconnect the loads to my battery, is my charger still connected to my batteries? And um, the answer should be yes. So that's a test for everyone. You should be able to have your battery switches all to off. You should connect your boat to shore power. And you should see the voltmeter uh, on your batteries uh, raise when you suddenly connect to shore power. You know, it should be at a resting voltage of maybe 12, 13 on a 12 volt battery bank. And then suddenly you're going to have the voltage go up to 13 and a half or 14 or 14 and a half. You want to make sure that your battery chargers are not uh, switched. They need to be always connected. And that's a, the, one of the questions. Now, most of you and most of us have them directly connected. A few of us, maybe 5%, have it done wrong. But, you know, you want to check, but it's not going to be something that's going to be a problem for many of us. Only a subset. And then the, to Tom's question, which is valid, is you can have your battery charger powered through the winter to maintain your batteries, which is a good thing, especially if they're, you know, uh, cold, you know, batteries don't want to be left uncharged for large periods of time uh, in cold weather, right? That's, that's not a good thing. So you disconnect the load so that you, if you do lose shore power, um, you suddenly don't, aren't running any loads on board. And so what I would do, because the second part of Tom's question was about lights, um, the lights I would have AC powered. So I would have in a situation like that, have everything on my boat powered by AC. So if I lose AC, I don't start draining the batteries. So my AC would be to recharge the batteries and to maintain them over the winter. And then I would also have, uh, lighting and stuff like that be, uh, powered by shore AC powered, make sure the inverters off, of course. 
Uh, and then that way, if you lose your power in the winter, which might happen, uh, you're not going to be draining your batteries. And so your batteries are going to stay full and uh, you're going to have a good start to the new season, a boating season. So great question, Tom. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for watching and tuning in. Safe boating. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.